So since we are at an in-person event, <laughs> I thought I'd do a, a quick uh, show of hands poll. So event driven as an idea has been around um, since. Multiple choice question for you. Option A, if it's kind of the early 1970s. Um, option B, if it's kind of mid 2000s. C is about 2015 and D is sometime last year. So for option A, if you can raise your hands if you feel that's where it was from. Okay, Sean at the back there. <laughs> option B. Okay, a few more hands. Option C, a couple more. And sometime last year, last option. Okay, so it's definitely not as recent as that. We have unanimous agreement. The answer, of course, is mid 2000s. That's the earliest reference I, I could find through Googling, so we can take that as a ballpark, but it's still been around for a long while. That's the kind of um, key thing to note here. So why does it feel like there's a new hype? What's changed? What I'd want to say to the technologists in the room, which, which I can safely say is, is probably the majority here, for the technologists, it's time for a reset. We've got to hit a big reset button in terms of what we think event-driven means. Because what was being described way back then um, is, is the, the, event, the term has morphed on to be a whole lot more. And there's a new business level dimension to describing yourself as event driven. So anybody who's doing, done say GUI, deve GUI development or been in the kind of capital market space as Sean alluded to earlier, the idea of event driven is not new, but what's changed is businesses themselves are now looking to describe themselves as event driven. There's a real time aspect to it. So I want to kind of highlight that as a key takeaway, this particular um, slide here for this talk in that we're doing more than just implementing some technology. We want to actually create real time reactive businesses at the end of this journey as well. So moving on then, um, for me personally, I think the biggest advantage event-driven or event-driven architecture has is that it's not a kind of inherently technical concept if you think about it. It's an opportunity to bring business and IT together. I mean, there's a historical kind of friction there between what IT delivers and what business asks for. This is a way of kind of addressing that problem. And, and that's what excites me most about EDA. To kind of go into a little bit more detail then, as Sean um, also covered, what is an event? We've, we've got to look at the fundamental of how do we define events in our business for it to make sense and then the technical pieces come afterwards. And how to do that, you don't have to go too far from the diction dictionary definition itself. An event is something that has happened or is happening and there's some level of importance to it. So if we start from there, ev whatever business you may be in, there's an inherent set of events that make sense just for you. There's a vocabulary there of how you're delivering for your customers, what experiences you're making that relate to events that are very specific to you. Right? So that's the first takeaway, which is we've got to be able to identify what those are for a particular business, or you, you could generalize to a particular vertical, in fact. And the second part of that is after we've identified it, we want those to be the triggers for everything else that follows. The processing that follows, that should be the trigger of building that real-time responsive experience. So kind of two dimensions to an event now then. First of all, you know, it's an event is gonna be different for every single business and, and that's part and parcel of what's expected. And then what do we do with them? We want that to be our triggers the compute that already takes place, the various business processes that you have today, instead of it being run on, say, a, a batch-driven approach, you know, some, a report being generated once an hour or once overnight, we're now saying we want to kick off those existing processes as they happen related to these events. So let's make it a bit more real. Well, let's take some events from the real world Air travel is one that I'm, I'm sure <laughs> we're all itching to get onto. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a while since you know most of us have traveled, but it's a common experience that we can all relate to, even if we're not kind of working to deliver in that vertical. So again, 
thinking in terms of real world, an event in that vertical could be a passenger has arrived at the check-in desk to start the, the check-in process. That's an obvious event. That means something for that business because you've got to now check them in, check their details, you know, um, allocate that seat. So you can, you can see that as being an obvious one that, you know, even if we're not in that business, we can see what it triggers. What's the business flows that are kind of kicking off from that? The second one is the passenger has arrived at their destination. The flight has landed, it's, it's been successful. So that is also an event, but it may not be obvious right now what that kicks off. Because if, if you've flown with any airline, you've landed, nothing happens. You know, there's no business interaction from landing. It's, that's it. That's the end of that journey, or as that's our perception today. But if we get to a point where everything's event-driven and you pick out all of these events as part of that business, that's where the opportunity now comes in. How do we build additional products? How do we build additional services, additional customer experiences to enjoy off of knowing what's happened? Right? And, and it doesn't have to be supporting a known set of transactions today. It's building the potential, the art of the possible is what event driven gives you. And that's the business side of that I want to kind of talk up here um, because it's, it's, it's where we get imaginative. It's where you start kind of broadening what you think your inputs and outputs are for your tech landscape today. And we can extend that approach out to the other vertical, right? So if we go to something completely different, connected vehicles, what does an event mean in that space, right? So your battery charge level for your electric vehicle reaching a certain percentage, that's an event because like in the first example here, that could be the trigger on a mobile app to say, make sure you're making your way to a charging station or don't start that long journey home because you, know, you don't have the charge to kind of complete it. So again, an, a f an e first example, one that you can you know, immediately think of what the business implications might be. But then a second one, again, in the art of the possible realm, which is what if there's an event generated after a certain number of miles has been driven? So again, as a driver, you might be thinking, that does nothing to me today. My car you know, does not kick off a business process as soon as I've hit a certain threshold, but it could. Right? What if that event triggers um, somebody to realize actually your service is coming due or there's some maintenance, regular maintenance that hits at that threshold is now due. Would it not be better as a driver to say, I've not, I'm not just seeing a, a, a kind of scary looking um, amber light come up on my dash to say my service is due. How much more friendly would it be for somebody to call me up and say, oh, your service is due. We have an appointment tomorrow. Would you, would you like to book yourself in? So you're able to kind of extend the relationship a business has with the consumer and, and offer more than what you could today. That's, a, that's, you know, business opportunity that's currently laying untapped. And that's what being event-driven gives you. We'll round it out by kind of moving to another vertical altogether, retail. Again, stock arriving at a store. That's a fairly kind of um, obvious event and as soon as you place yourself in that mindset you can think yep yeah, stock arrival means something it's update of inventory perhaps there's customer orders waiting to be fulfilled okay so we've got the easy way into event driven and then the the second one is again the art of the possible what if I'm dynamically monitoring my stock levels as soon as it's reached a certain threshold maybe I can proactively put the order in maybe I can kick off some analytics that will predict for me exactly when that's gonna reach to zero. So I can get the order in for replenishment before I've actually got to a point where it's crunch time, right? So a couple of examples of from each kind of vertical to kind of let you get those kind of wheels turning, right? What does it mean to be event driven? There's the definite business aspect of it. And then we get to the technology. Everything that Sean talked about in terms of event mesh, event streaming, event APIs, that's just the detail. We don't need that until we've created a business level expectation to be real time, to be operating in a much different way than we had been in the past. So I'll kind of zoom in a little bit more on the air travel example to kind of um, highlight very s concrete business outcomes that you could be taking. 
the first one is, you know, the, the passengers started their check-in process. What, what would that mean for an airline? What, what's the potential future new product offering that could be done here? What if there's a dynamic offer that could be made to you arriving at the check-in desk? Oh, um, Miss Jane, you know, the, we've got a special upgrade offer just for you, and it's factored in availability of the next cabin class. Perhaps it's empty, so why have the seats be empty when the aircraft takes off? I'd rather reward a loyal customer with a sweetener deal to upgrade them, right? So even to power that kind of offering, you need to have real-time data. There's no point offering that upsell opportunity maybe in an email three hours before the flight because you're not going to look at that. It's too early to act on. But having it timed exactly when you can actually do an impulse buy, that's where the magic comes in, right? You're, you're going to make that split-second decision, yes, I'll take it, versus, oh, I'll put off that decision until I get to the airport. And then it doesn't appear again. You've forgotten, right? So the real-time aspect is, you know, first of all, knowing exactly where the passenger is, knowing exactly how heavy, heavily booked the next cabin class is, knowing exactly the current arrival status, because airlines make a lot of money from late arrivals who need to buy a last-minute ticket, usually business travelers, and then they get those seats. But if there's real-time data powering this engine that says, actually, based on historical data, we know if they were going to arrive, they would have arrived by now, there's a very good possibility 50% of that cabin is going to go empty. All of that goes into the recommendation engine, right? Should we offer this, this upsell or not? And at a favorable price to, to lock it in. So, you know, you've got mon tangible monetary benefit for the business here. You could capture more revenue, more wallet share if you do this right. But it doesn't have to be just about um, revenue, right? What if you could use event-driven real-time flow to take some of the stresses out of flying? We've all been there. You arrive at the airport. You're constantly checking, what gate do I need to get to? Is it open yet? How, what's my expected walk time to get to the gate? Do I have time to get shopping in? You're just constantly kind of spinning wheels trying to make sure <laughs> you get onto your flight. What if as soon as you're at the right point of that checking in journey, a push notification comes to your phone or your app and says, Miss Jane, your gate number is gate 12. That's approximately 12 minutes walk and it's going to open in 30 minutes time you know immediately, I've got 20 minutes to work with. I'm going to go grab, grab that coffee. I'm going to go duty-free and see if I can pick up a, um, you know, a, a good deal somewhere, right? Happy customers um, make returning loyal customers. You're taking some of the anxieties out. And again, there's not, it doesn't have to be always tied to revenue or that kind of conversation with the business, right? And the last one, I think Sean touched upon this as well. You can create experiences for your cons consumers that reward that you know instant gratification center of our brain <laughs> which is as what if as soon as the flight has arrived which is the kind of second event here you get a push to your phone miss jane you've just reached the next tier of, of the loyalty card now that could have obviously arrived a week or so later in, as an email in the inbox but receiving it just as you complete that journey and as you're stepping off, there's that association, that there's, there's the context to that coming in. So you get that feeling of pleasure, you know, the dopamine hit. I've, I've hit that and is to do with this flight coming off this aircraft of this airline. Right? So that's the association you can get um, by having real-time flows and events power your new customer experiences. So to kind of summarize then, you know, being real time makes you relevant. You, you can do um, things that just make sense at that point in time. And then as Sean also said, there's a decay. There's a kind of lack of value to doing something as time goes on. Right? You can be meaningful and actionable. You can act on what's being told. If we take the um, gate notification example, if that didn't arrive on time, if that arrived 20 minutes after you've already decided to make your way to the gate, you've missed the opportunity to grab that coffee or do that bit of shopping. And 
instead of it being an advantage, it's more of a hindrance. It is a cause of frustration. I wish I'd known this earlier. <laughs> so there's the real time part of it. There's no point having this kind of um, user journey in place if it's not happening at the right time. And then, you know, the ability to be in the moment. That's what the last one gives you. You, you can be following, you know, not in a creepy sense, but you can be part of the journey as your passenger goes, you know, goes through your off product offering, whatever that may be. So the, the airline example here, but it could be the picking up from the shelf through the point of sale and off at, out of the store for, you know, a fashion store, for example. So that's the kind of what I wanted to focus in this session, which is, yes, there's a lot of technology here. We're technologists. We like to get stuck in to that level of detail. But there's n there isn't a kind of project here that you do in isolation without the business being bought into it. So it's our role as technologists to show them that kind of big picture. What are we trying to do? What is it going to unlock? Because us technologists can't deliver anything until we've got that buy-in from the business. So this is me trying to kind of help in that conversation that I've been in several times. It's difficult for us techies to sometimes see the other side of the picture, right? And it, it's, it's doable. <laughs> that's that's the, the role I play um, for, for the majority of what I do. And it's difficult for for me to do a talk like this without mentioning that often overused, potentially fatigued term, digital transformation, right, and disruption. But it's relevant here because usually in the backdrop of a business looking to adopt new technology, new modern technology like cloud, like machine learning, there's a transformation level agenda happening at the business level. So we've got to be aware of that and know what those expectations are. So there's an expectation from the business, again, about democratized access. If somebody wants to build a new product offering and it's to say something like, oh, if I knew my customer is at this point of the journey, I could offer this or I could kick off this recommendation or I could provide this customized price. They don't want to have a conversation with IT that's about, oh, there's this record change in this database table that will let me know when they're at this point of the journey. That's, that's, that, that switches them off. But if it's all an event, it's inherently couched in real world vocabulary. That's the unifier between IT and business now because you're able to say the user has added something to the shopping basket. The user has just checked out. The user has kind of just, pro just made a refund request. All of those are business level events described in business vocabulary that can then you know, trigger whatever new business process could be or what new product offering could be. And, and that's essentially the kind of hand in hand approach. So there's democratized access needed. You know, we need to have meaningful conversations with the business around how do I know certain things are happening? How do I know my consumer at this point of the journey? And how do we do that? It's okay because everything is an event. I can tell you, you need to tap into this particular event that's gonna be emitted at this point of the workflow and that can fork off to create a new offering. So there was a kind of very technology led kind of keynote and I want to kind of elevate that to say, yes, that's, that's <laughs> what we're looking for as techies in this room here but we're also gonna be acutely aware there's a business level dimension to everything that we've got to deliver. How do we have that conversation? How do we know what the expectation is on the other side so we can match it? And yeah, so if you liked some of that in terms of kind of um, trying to get us thinking along the right lines, thinking along you know, business outcomes as part of delivering on IT, this content is actually part of the kickoff for our kind of free certification program to be an event-driven architecture practitioner. So if you're interested in proceeding with this kind of further, do look us up. Um, we've got our kind of practitioners who are recently graduated sharing their digital badges at this I'm Solace certified LinkedIn hashtag. Plenty of um, 
individuals out there for you to join that community and just to kind of tap into um, yourself to find out from those real practitioners what does EDA mean for you? How did you solve problem X? Or how did you have the conversation with the business? I'm hitting a roadblock here. There's a community out there, so I'd like to introduce you um, to that as well. And yeah, happy to take any questions. Nigel, do we have a roving mic? <laughs> Hands up if there are any questions, and, and I'm sure we can coordinate. OK, thanks, everyone, for your time. And um, great to see you in person once again. And as I said, this EDA Summit London is actually a continuation of our virtual launch that we did in May. Plenty of content there. And the postcards on the chairs have a QR code that can um, send you to the YouTube channel. And at 4 PM, remember, we are doing drinks and um, food here in, in, this, in this room. So we hope to see you and your colleagues there. Thank you.